I like the idea of having favorite recipes from all over the U.S., Canada, and wherever. What's been most useful to me as a new young homemaker is the practical information, like how to stuff, roast, and baste a turkey for your first Thanksgiving and Christmas. Now, treat yourself and your family to Connie's Celebrity Cookbook by sending $10 for television time to Laurel Lundstrom, Sisseton, South Dakota. In Canada, send $15 to Laurel Lundstrom, P.O. Box 4000, Winnipeg, Manitoba. I've really enjoyed Connie's great cooking, and you'll enjoy the 1,200 recipes in this Connie's Celebrity Cookbook. Send your gift of $10 or more for TV time to Lowell Lundstrom, Sisseton, South Dakota. In Canada, send $15 to Box 4000, Winnipeg, Manitoba. This is Dale Olstead from what town in Minnesota? From Minneapolis. Minneapolis, Minnesota. And you and I met on board an air flight from St. Louis to Minneapolis. No, we're going from uh, Atlanta. Oh, that's right, Atlanta to Minneapolis. And uh, would you tell the folk here just what happened on that flight? Well, uh, my cousin uh, talked me into coming down to, uh, going down to North Carolina with the intent to get me over to the PTL. And uh, in the upper room to pray for my wife, who was, had cancer. I wasn't real keen on the idea, but I went along with them. And uh, while in the upper room praying for my wife, I, um, something came over me just a split second, but it just lifted me up. And uh, it actually frightened me. I didn't know what was, what was happening. And I just kind of put it on the back burner. I forgot about it. Well, I was scheduled to go back uh, Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon at 5 o'clock. And uh, I woke up Friday morning, and I, I just, I, something told me I had to change my flight and come home earlier. And so I had uh, my uh, cousin's wife change the flight to, I think it was about 8 o'clock in the morning. And uh, as we entered the terminal, my cousin said, well, who's your friend, Paul Lundstrom? And uh, the reason he said my friend is, We've been discussing religion all week long, and uh, I made the statement I'd watched uh, all the uh, preachers on TV, and I didn't like any of them, including Paul Lundstrom. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, he said, you don't have to worry about it. If he's on the same flight, you know, God's going to protect you. sitting in my seat. I, I was forced to talk to him. And so he asked if he could sit there until we got to Atlanta. And uh, I said, okay. And I, I took his seat. And we got to Atlanta and uh, had about a half hour, 45 minute layover. And I came back. Uh, I boarded the plane late again. And I wanted to get uh, some pictures of the uh, pilots for my son who's in the airplane and stuff. And uh, as I came down the aisle, Lowell grabbed me and thanked me for letting him sit there in my seat for the flight. And uh, I went back and sat down in my seat. And if I recall, the whole plane was full except for those two seats alongside of me and the two seats alongside of him. And as I sat there, I started thinking. I watched him, and I just I couldn't take my eyes off him. He was praying. He was. I could. He was. Uh, he was praying, uh, and I just, for some reason, I, I felt I had to talk to him. And so I finally got up enough nerve to. And like, I, if there had been somebody sitting alongside of me, I wouldn't have bothered him. Or if there had been somebody sitting alongside of Lowell, I wouldn't. Have when you went up there. It was just an open path for me. The whole thing was planned. The whole thing was set up. <laughs> and uh, so I went up there and I asked him if I could talk to him and, uh, to pray for my wife who was going to have surgery that next week. Brain surgery. And uh, he prayed for my wife and uh, and just slid 
right into the, um, asked me if I was a Christian, and I said, well, I said, not, not a very good one. And uh, next thing I know, I was accepted Christ as my Savior, and it's been a great since, I'll tell you. I, uh, uh, I just, I don't know, I can't explain it. It's just, you have to do it to find out. I didn't, some of you know. Good. Let's give our brother Dale a nice hand. God bless you. in Chicago were fighting one mob clan against another. In fact, what they decided to do to get revenge, one mobster killed another mobster's child, his son, and so in order to get revenge, instead of the mobster revenging by killing the other mobster's son, he waited with his men with pans of acid. And when that mobster's daughter came out of school, they 
rushed up to her and threw this pan of acid in her face and it destroyed and disfigured the girl so much that she was just a twisted, grotesque thing compared to the beauty that she was. And every time that mobster looked at his daughter, he saw this horrible looking thing that was once his precious daughter. And that way the opposing mobster got his revenge much better than even having her put to death or having her brother put to death. Now that's what the devil would like to do to you. He would like to destroy your family. He would like to destroy your children. He would like to disfigure you and ruin you until every time God our Father in heaven looks down at you, his child, that the Lord's heart would be broken. And that's how demonic the devil is. He really has you targeted, friend. Targeted for tragedy. In fact, if you read over in Luke, you can read about Peter. Peter was a great apostle. He was one of the Lord's strongest apostles. But you know, Jesus looked at Peter one day and he said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Jesus told Peter, you're targeted for tragedy. You're targeted for the devil's attack. And Jesus said, I pray for you that your faith fail not. And when you're converted, strengthen your brethren. In other words, when you come back to God, strengthen your brethren. A lot of people think the devil is just some kind of fairy tale. You know, 97% of the American people believe in God, but there's only around 47% who actually believe in a devil. Now, Jesus said that Satan desires to have you that he might sift you out as wheat. Young man, young lady, the devil would like to sift you out as wheat. He'd like to kick you right out. You've got to realize you're targeted. The devil has you in his sights. And you may not believe in the devil, but that makes you all the more his victim. Because then you don't even run for cover. Who is Satan? Satan was one of God's great archangels. And you can read about what happened. In Isaiah chapter 14, so many people say, How did the devil ever fall from heaven? Here's what Isaiah said of Satan. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations. Note, a lot of people wonder, how did the devil ever fall from heaven? And since his fall, what does he do? He weakens the nations. He weakens your family. He weakens your marriage. He tries to weasel his way into your heart, inject thoughts into your mind. He tries to destroy you mentally and spiritually and physically. Satan weakens families. Remember, in the beginning he was an archangel. Michael is the great archangel today. Gabriel is an archangel. And so is Lucifer. Someone who studied the scriptures says that Michael was the archangel that ministered unto God. Gabriel was the archangel that ministered to the Holy Spirit because he's always making announcements for, on behalf of the Holy Spirit. But Lucifer was the archangel unto the Son of God. And he was filled with pride. It says in verse 13, For thou hast said in thine heart, 
You see, all sin begins in the heart. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Notice, a lot of people ask the question, how did sin ever enter heaven? It actually didn't. It started here on earth because this earth was Satan's domain. The earth was his kingdom. Jesus said Satan is the prince of this world. Lucifer, Satan, used to rule over this earth. And for a moment now, he still does. But see, sin did not actually enter into heaven. This did not happen in the presence of God, for he said in his heart, I will ascend into heaven. It happened while he was here. He was given so much power and authority that finally he thought that he could rule heaven better than God. For he said, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. That refers to the angels of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. And if you want to study of where God dwells, he dwells in the north. You can read all through the scriptures of how God comes out of the north again and again. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the Most High. Notice five times he says, I will, I will, I will. I will, I will. I is the middle letter of pride. I is the middle letter of Lucifer. I is the middle letter of sin. And when a person says, I will, you better be careful because the very thing you say you may try to do will be your downfall. The Bible says, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. In fact, if you read over in Revelation 12, you can read what happened. In Revelation 12, verse 7, the Bible says, and there was war in heaven. God had a happy family in heaven. The cherubim, the seraphim, the angels, the host of glory were happy. But Lucifer, the enemy, the dragon. The Bible says, And Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. Do you see this? Satan tried to pull a coup in heaven, and he took all of his forces and threw them against the forces of God, and there was this great battle the Bible says, and he prevailed not, neither was there found any more place in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceived the whole world. And he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So there was war in heaven. When the devil lost his bid against God, he was cast out back to this earth. That's where the demons are now. Demons are angels who lost their bodies. They are disembodied spirits. And demons of hell are directed by Satan to attack you and to destroy your family. The enemy of your soul is unbelievably vile and wicked. In single adult, you might say, well, I'm not married. I don't have anything to worry about. That's what you think. The devil will try to seduce you into sin until you lose your faith in God. Talk to any young lady who has, a trouble, has problems believing in God. Usually it traces to back to her immorality or to the young man struggling about his faith in Christ that goes back to his immorality. And a lot of young people across this great land are saying that Christianity doesn't work. Listen, Christianity has not been tried and found unproven. Christianity has been found difficult 
and left on try. But see, the devil targets you. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your desires. He knows the flesh is stronger than the spirit unless you really live a godly, holy, spirit-filled life. I really feel the Holy Spirit gave me this message to help you. I felt the Lord stirring this in my heart, and I believe you felt the same stirring where you're at. If you know that you need to pray and dedicate your life to God, receive Christ now with me. Say this prayer after me. Father in heaven, Father in heaven, I know I've sinned. I know I've sinned. And I believe Jesus died for me. And I believe Jesus died for me. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Cleanse me of my sin. Cleanse me of my sin. So I can be ready to meet you. So I can be ready to meet you. And so that Satan will leave me alone. So that Satan will leave me alone. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. God has heard your prayer. And you can thank Him for what He's doing in your life. It's the Holy Spirit that makes Jesus Christ real to you. I would like to send you a book that will help you. It's entitled, How You Can Know You Are Saved For Sure. In this book, I show you from the scriptures how God has promised to forgive your sins so you can have assurance that all is well with your soul. This book will be sent to you free and without charge. Write me Lowell Lundstrom, Sisseton, South Dakota. In Canada, write in care of Box 4000, Winnipeg, Manitoba. Now remember, there are committed counselors standing by to help you. If you'll dial this number, 1612-235-0222, dial this number that's on your screen. If the number happens to be busy, write it down and dial it back a little bit later. We want to help you so that you can know that all is well between you and the Lord, so that you'll have authority over Satan and that you'll be ready for the Lord's return. Be sure to write for my celebrity cookbook containing 1,200 of the best recipes I've found. I know you'll enjoy them for years to come. Remember that caring counselors are standing by if you'll dial the telephone number on your screen. Until next week at the same time, these are your friends Laurel and Connie Lundstrom speaking for all of your friends here at the Lundstrom Ministry saying, God's very best to you.
up the mountain Let's pull the devil down You see, he doesn't have any right to be on my higher ground I'm gonna move on up the mountain With my shield and my sword And I will see sweet victory In the name of the Lord Listen now down here in this valley of decision long enough But I know my God's almighty Cause I've seen him do his stuff I know the devil, he is mean and smart It's time we call his blood So I proclaim in Jesus' name That I have had enough Don't move all up the mountain Come on, let's go to bed Special helps give it that special touch. 
and you like the idea of having favorite recipes from all over the U.S., Canada, and wherever. What's been most useful to me as a new young homemaker is the practical information, like how to stuff, roast, and baste a turkey on first Thanksgiving and Christmas. Now, treat yourself and your family to Connie's Celebrity Cookbook by sending $10 for television time to Laurel Lundstrom, Sicilian, South Dakota. In Canada, send $15 to Laurel Lundstrom, P.O. Box 4000, Winnipeg, Manitoba. I really enjoyed Connie's great cooking, and you'll enjoy the 1,200 recipes in this Connie's Celebrity Cookbook. Send a gift of $10 or more for TV time to Laurel Lundstrom, Sisseton, South Dakota. In Canada, send $15 to Box 4000, Winnipeg, Manitoba. Give us your name. It's, a, it's a Alvin McGill. Alvin McGill? And Sharon. <laughs> Good. Now, I'll tell you what, you folks went through some tough times. Yes. Yeah, I'm having trouble talking to my little. <laughs> you catch a person by surprise. Well, I didn't let you know about it ahead of time, otherwise you'd have sat there and worried. No. <laughs> Uh, this church knows the majority of the people here know uh, our story, our testimony. Good. Well, tell, tell me what happened. I mean, how tough have things gotten between the two of you? Okay. Okay. Well, two and a half years ago, in August, my husband got drunk one night and we had an argument and he shot me. And the bullet just grazed my heart. And it's only by the grace of God that I'm alive tonight, and God has restored our marriage. At the time, I was a very angry, very bitter woman, and I wanted a divorce, and I wanted to keep my husband in jail for the rest of his life. And I remember my husband wrote a letter at that time to my son, who was a Christian at that time, and he said that this, at the at the end of the letter, he said, this could be the start of happiness for all of us. And I didn't understand that at all at the time. I thought, how could this be happiness when he had shot me and he destroyed our family? But we didn't know it at that time, but Al had already found God. And, and he knew what forgiveness was about. And he had found a peace with God. And through this church, through Kathy, she came and told me that about God and, and I thank her every day of my life that she came and told me about God and when I told her I couldn't forgive Al she said just ask God to forgive him now Sharon and, and that's how it started and, and I remember the night that God just filled my heart with that forgiveness and that love again for my husband and I praise him for that every day Uh -huh. 10, we were married 10 years ago, and 
a week ago Sunday we had our vows set over again. Amen. Well, thank God the Lord mended your marriage. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. Shall we do that? God bless you. President Lowell Lundstrom invites high school juniors and seniors from across the country to meet at Trinity Bible College for College Days 88, April 7th and 8th. As our guest, you'll get to meet new people, tour the campus, stay in our dorms, and enjoy three exciting worship services in Black Memorial Chapel. Thursday evening, Jesse Dixon will join the Lundstrom Singers for a power-packed concert. Throughout the two days, pastors and laymen will be challenged and inspired by Reverend Harold Carter of Baltimore, Maryland, and Reverend Robert Schmidgall of Naperville, Illinois, as they join evangelist Laura Lundstrom for Trinity Spring Pastor School. On Friday afternoon, administrative assistance will be given to those desiring financial aid. Don't miss these two life-changing days. To register for College Days 88, write Trinity Bible College, College Days 88, Ellendale, North Dakota, or call 1-800-523-1603 today. Now here's all with the second in a series of messages entitled, You Are Targeted for Tragedy. Have you been doing what God called you to do? Yes. Now, if you haven't, you can understand now what the devil's up to. Because, see, if the earth was his domain, if the earth was Satan's citadel, if the earth was his main kingdom, and now God has called you to inherit the earth. The Bible says the meek shall inherit what? The earth. You have been called of God as a believer priest and a king to put God's law and order here onto this earth. Well, you'll know how upset he'll be at you. Why he is so angry at you that this is why the devil has targeted your family. He targeted the first family. He broke it up. You can read it over there in Genesis, the very first, the third chapter of how Satan targeted the first family. Adam and Eve were right in the middle of paradise. Everything was perfect. Perfect provision. Perfect protection. Perfect weather. Everything perfect in the middle of paradise. Now listen. Somebody says then, well, well, why doesn't, why is God allowing me to be tempted? Because that's the only way that you can express your love for him. God could have destroyed the devil. But you would have still sinned. Given enough time, you'd have sinned just like Satan did. So all the existence of the devil does is accelerate the rate in which you're going to commit the sin. He, had, he suggests the sin earlier instead of taking two or three thousand years or five or ten or twenty thousand years the devil suggests the sin and all he does is accelerate the process if you don't have it in your heart to sin the devil will suggest it and you'll jump on it so all that Satan does now is accelerate the rate of the suggesting of sin and the completion of it if it's in your heart. He suggested to Eve, eat the forbidden fruit. And she did. The glory of God left her. That Shekinah glory, the radiance of the Lord left her. And when Adam came back, he could see right away that Eve had sinned. And the Bible says in Timothy that, that man was not deceived in the transgression but the woman. If Adam was not deceived in the transgression, why then did he take of the forbidden fruit? Because when Adam came back and he saw Eve, he said, Oh no, Eve, you committed that sin. You can just hear him saying, Oh no, Eve, you did it. You did what God said not to do. But then Adam had a choice. He could remain with Eve or else leave her and go and be with God. But Adam loved Eve so much that when he saw her in her fallen condition, Adam willingly, knowingly, deliberately partook
took of the forbidden fruit and ate of it just so that he could be with Eve. And he himself received the wrath of God upon him so he could be with Eve. Now that doesn't mean much until you read in the New Testament that Jesus is the second Adam. And when he saw us in our fallen condition, our Lord and Savior loved us so much. He came down to earth and was made sin for us who knew no sin. Jesus willingly chose to be with us and made sin so that he could be with us and bring us back to God. Don't you love the Lord? Say a loud amen. Amen. So you see, the devil targeted the first family. And so Adam and Eve, each are blaming one another. Eve says, you know, it was the serpent's fault. And Adam said, it's Eve's fault. And here you've got a hassle right in the middle of their castle. Because they were targeted by Satan for tragedy. Maybe you're having a struggle in your family. And there's just those forces pounding one against the other. You see, it's because you're targeted. The devil would like to destroy you and destroy your marriage. Why even destroy their children? You know, uh, why they were out in the field, Cain and Abel? And Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Abel offered the blood of the firstborn lambs. He gave the blood sacrifice. And Cain came with vegetables, and God did not honor vegetables. Because the way sin is taken away is not by human effort, but by blood. God is a holy God and he determines the way your sins are taken away is not by works of your own righteousness, but by the blood that is shed. And Jesus was the Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. And it's by his blood that our sins are taken away. Well, Abel offered this perfect sacrifice. And God honored it. There was some sign from God. Maybe fire came down and consumed the sacrifice. But Cain became jealous of Abel and killed him. Who was it that put that hatred in Cain's heart to strike out against his brother and kill him? It was the devil who hated the blood. It was the devil who hated the perfect sacrifice. And so the devil has not only torn Adam and Eve up, but the devil has destroyed their child. And their son is a murderer. So then what happened? The Lord God spoke unto Cain and he says, The voice of your bro brother's blood cries unto me from the ground. And now you're cursed from the earth. And when you till the ground, it will not henceforth yield her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be in the earth. God said, you're cursed. And Cain cried unto the Lord and said, my punishment's greater than I can bear. My God, I can't live with the curse. Behold, you've driven me out of this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face, sh face shall I be hid, and I'll be a fugitive and a vagabond on the earth. He said, I'm going to run the rest of my life cursed. I'm going to be fleeing like a fugitive all the rest of my life. And it shall come to pass, Cain said, anybody who sees me will try to kill me because they'll hear what I did against my brother. But our God in heaven was so wonderful that even after Cain committed that terrible murder, the Lord said unto Cain, I'll put a mark upon you lest anyone finding you should kill you. And God marked Cain with a mark of mercy. I don't know what that mark was, but maybe it was an M he put right in his forehead. For God said, even though you're guilty, I'll give you a mark of mercy so that you won't be killed because I love you even though you did wrong. And friend, if you've done wrong, maybe you felt the curse of God is on you. But if you'll cry out to God, if you'll cry out for mercy, God will put a mark of mercy on you. And for the rest of your life, you can carry the mark of God's forgiveness, knowing that God had mercy on you. Amen.
But you see, the devil targets a lot of families. He targeted Noah's family. He really did. Noah was the man who found grace in the eyes of God and saved the human race from destruction. Remember, Noah built the great ark that saved the world. If it hadn't been for Noah, we wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be preaching and you wouldn't be listening. Well, Noah did really great. But something happened. After that flood, after all, everything had been completed, Noah one day decided to plant a vineyard. He did really good. He planted a vineyard and he raised some grapes and he drank the wine and got drunk. Can you imagine such a thing? The Bible says Noah began to be a husband when he planted a vineyard. Verse 20 of Genesis 9. And he drank of the wine and was drunken and he was uncovered within his tent. Noah got so drunk that he was lying in his tent naked. Satan targeted Noah because he wanted to destroy his family with drink. Why? Even though Noah was a righteous man, the devil said, I know his weakness. He likes the juice. He likes to drink. He likes a little wine. And that's my way to get in. He drank the wine, became drunk, was lying in his tent naked, and Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father. His son Ham came in and saw the nakedness of his father and told his brothers about it. Now in Bible days to see your father naked was a terrible insult. You would never want to see your father naked. And so the Bible says, he told Shem and Japheth about it, and Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it both upon their shoulders and walked backward into the tent and covered the nakedness of their father and their faces were backward and they didn't see their father naked. They were kind enough to try to cover up their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew that what his younger son had done unto him. And Noah turned to Ham and said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. He cursed his son. He cursed Ham, the father of Canaan. Can you imagine such a thing? Here is this righteous man with the holy family, preserved of God, but the guy gets drunk, Noah gets drunk, and because of what his son has done, he curses his own son. See, that family was targeted for tragedy, and that split up the family. And Canaan had to flee, and it divided the family. I'm urging you right now as a father that you'll never drink an alcoholic beverage. One in every three families in America today is being torn apart by alcohol. One in every three. One in every ten who take the first social drink becomes a ruined, wasted alcoholic. And I'm right up to here, I'm fried right up to here with the so-called Christians who say, well, I can take a drink and there's nothing wrong in me having a drink. That's a lie. It's a lie. Don't touch it. Don't even touch the stuff. Because this is what happened to Noah. He took his drink and the devil targeted his family for destruction. He paid. I really feel the Holy Spirit gave me this message to help you. I felt the Lord stirring this in my heart and I believe you felt the same stirring where you're at. If you know that you need to pray and dedicate your life to God, 
Receive Christ now with me. Say this prayer after me. Father in heaven. Father in heaven. I know I've sinned. I know I've sinned. And I believe Jesus died for me. And I believe Jesus died for me. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Cleanse me of my sin. Cleanse me of my sin. So I can be ready to meet you. So I can be ready to meet you. And so that Satan will leave me alone. So that Satan will leave me alone. In Jesus' name. Thank the Lord. God has heard your prayer. And you can thank Him for what He's doing in your life. It's the Holy Spirit that makes Jesus Christ real to you. I would like to send you a book that will help you. It's entitled, How You Can Know You Are Saved for Sure. In this book, I show you from the scriptures how God has promised to forgive your sins so you can have assurance that all is well with your soul. This book will be sent to you free and without charge. Write me Lowell Lundstrom, Sisseton, South Dakota. In Canada, write in care of Box 4000, Winnipeg, Manitoba. Now remember, there are committed counselors standing by to help you. If you dial this number, 1612-235-0222, Dial this number that's on your screen. If the number happens to be busy, write it down and dial it back a little bit later. We want to help you so that you can know that all is well between you and the Lord, so that you'll have authority over Satan and that you'll be ready for the Lord's return. Be sure to read from our celebrity cookbook containing 1,200 of the best recipes I've found. I know you'll enjoy them for years to come. I know that Connie's Celebrity Cookbook will be a great blessing to you. Thousands of our friends have told us of how they've enjoyed theirs, and we enjoy yours. It took Connie over 30 years to collect these tremendous recipes, 1,200 of the best. Send your gift of $10 or more for television time to Laura Lundstrom, Sisseton, South Dakota, in Canada, send $15 in care of Box 4000, Winnipeg, Manitoba. Until next week at the same time, these are your friends, Laurel and Connie Lundstrom, speaking for all of your friends here at the Lundstrom Ministry, saying, God's very best to you. Young person, I've served as president of Trinity Bible College in Ellendale, North Dakota, for over five years. We're training hundreds of Christian young people for Christian leadership. And we invite you to join us. Dial this toll-free number, 1-800-523-1603. You'll get a top-notch education. You'll be trained to become a soul winner in Christian leadership. Come, share the spirit, catch the fire, and achieve God's very best. Dial this toll-free number right now, 1-800-523-1603. Trinity Bible College in Ellendale, North Dakota.